In addition to coding, Elizabeth also created memos to record her thoughts as she was working through the articles and analysing them. You can see here that Elizabeth organised her memos into subfolders. So when I select a different subfolder, you can see the different memos sitting in those folders. It's easy to move memos from one folder to another if you want to reorganise them. So for example, I can move this one, Community Organisation, from the Literature folder into the Analysis folder at any time. And now when I choose the Analysis folder, that memo will be there. To create a new memo, you can simply use the relevant icon from the Create menu. Or, as I'm going to do now, we can just right click in the empty list view space and create a new memo from there. Having named it and optionally added a description, when we click OK, the new memo is listed in the list view within the folder you created it in and the memo opens up in the detail view ready to write in. An example of a memo that Elizabeth created at this phase in the project is the memo called Problem of Sameness. If I double click on this to open it, we can see that Elizabeth wrote the first section of this memo on April the 30th in 2005, when she recorded her thinking at that time, and then again in February 2016, Elizabeth added more information to this memo. Sometimes she copied and pasted information from Microsoft Word files that she'd previously written about the articles into the MVivo memos. And in this way, she was keeping track of her thinking as she was going through the analysis process. After Elizabeth had coded all of the articles, she then organised the nodes into initial categories. To do this, she viewed all her nodes in the list view, so I'll just do that now. And we can see them all listed. There are 170 in this version of the project. You can see that each node has a prefix, ALT, CHAL, DEF, etc. And Elizabeth added these prefixes during this categorization phase of the project. So I'll just right click on this node ambivalence and I'll go to the node properties. But if I just remove the prefix, you'll see that now that node doesn't have the prefix. And that's initially how all of the codes looked. But in this phase, Elizabeth wanted to organize the nodes in a way that represented itself in the listing of nodes. And so to do that, and to organize them by category, she added all the prefixes that we can see here to keep all the categories together. Renaming can be undertaken either by right-clicking and opening the node properties, as I showed earlier, but it's also possible, and quicker, to click slowly twice on a node name and enter Rename mode. And then you can just delete or add anything to the name. The difference in how you rename nodes has to do with whether you have the opportunity to add to the node description at the point of renaming or not. When you're renaming nodes and you want to amend the definition of a node at the same time, then it would make sense to do the renaming in the Node Properties dialog box. Whereas if you only want to rename the node, then it will be quicker to go to the Rename mode, as I showed in the list view, by double-clicking slowly twice. For this node, Clear Goals and Ground Rules, Elizabeth used the prefix CHAL to represent challenges. And she used this prefix because she had noted that when authors discuss clear goals and ground rules, they discuss them in the context of there being a challenge for interfaith dialogue, either in terms of developing them or because they contested that interfaith dialogue did not go very well if there were not clear goals and ground rules. Either way, clear goals and ground rules seem to be a practical challenge of interfaith dialogue. So Elizabeth renamed the nodes according to these prefixes, and you can see them all here in the list. The useful thing about doing this is that when the list view is sorted alphabetically, as it currently is, every node belonging to one category is listed together. So after challenges, we have a group of nodes prefixed, prefixed with DEF, indicating definitions, DT, indicating dialogue theory, ES, indicating empirical studies, and so on. Elizabeth could have organised the nodes into categories by creating a parent node for each category and hanging each relevant node underneath as child nodes. And I've replicated that to show you in this temporary folder under nodes. Either way serves as a means of categorical organisation. It's just that Elizabeth decided to use the prefix naming system to organise the codes in the listing rather than using parent and child nodes. 
The final phase of this first stage was for Elizabeth to write the first draft of her literature review. The way that she went about this was to export coded literature by category. So every node that was created in phase two was exported with their coded references into Microsoft Word, and Elizabeth did this according to the categories. There are different ways of doing so, and I'll just show you two options. First of all, if I go back to the main nodes listing, if I want to export all of the nodes relating to challenges, I can select the ones that I'm interested in, holding my shift key down when I multiply select nodes, and then I can right click and choose the export nodes option. I have various options to choose from. I'm going to send it to a Word file, so choose the reference view option here, and I can add any additional information uh, that's required. But for now, I'll just quickly click to open on export so that the files open up straight away and click OK. Exporting in this way puts the coded references for each node in a separate Microsoft Word file. Here's one just to show you, and you can see the references are listed here source by source. Alternatively, if it's more useful to have one file in which all the references linked to each node are stored, then the reports feature may be more useful. So I'll choose this one, Coding Summary by Node Report. Choose here, by clicking on the Select button, the nodes that we're interested in. Click OK, and then the report will be generated. And here you can see that all of the information for each of the nodes that I asked for is in, contained within one report. Initially the report is stored within NVivo, but we can export that into a Word file, and then open it up in Word. When Elizabeth was actually writing up her literature review, she had the exported information open in the Word file adjacent to a separate Word file into which she wrote up the first draft of her review. In this way, she was able to refer to the coded references that had been exported, together with the articles that they came from and the notes that she had already written whilst writing up her review.